Hi, I'm Hussein Abbas, and you can find me online in many places by searching for Hussein Web. Today we are going to talk about GitHub Superlinter workflow actions. So GitHub earlier this week they announced uh, June 18th actually. So just yesterday they announced uh, GitHub Superlinter, one linter to rule them all which is basically an action that you would add to your GitHub repositories to print all the files in your repository. I had a perfect repository to try this out. I realized that when I looked at this uh, example, this this blog post they have written, and I looked at, I saw that they are validating Ansible and Terraform scripts. That made me realize that, okay, I have the perfect repository for this. So this is a repository I set up some time back. This was in uh, response to a request from someone wanted to set up a very simple server but with automation so i had i had this from a previous uh, project where where i have like a very simple terraform module for the, for creating an instance on aws and uh, azure and also an ansible playbook which would configure it for lamp environment and the target was to install drupal on that so I had this and uh, this was in response to a request, so I just put it up. I was wondering what documentation I should add over here. And I thought I might even do a video for that, you know, a whole video for installing Drupal on your own server. But then I thought I wanted to try out this Superlinter anyway, and it does support linting Ansible and Terraform files. So why not try that out over here? With this video, we'll set up the workflow, we'll set up the action and i'm very sure that they would be it would definitely report errors and we'll see we'll see what we can do about that maybe maybe we'll not fix it in this video let's see let's see what what kind of errors do come up so you can see this uh, in your uh, repository when you go to this repository by the way you can look at the repository i'll put a link in the description so when you go to this repository there is an actions tab so you should find this in your own repositories and you would see a page like this get started with GitHub Actions. And you already see that GitHub is suggesting a particular workflow for me. Uh, so it says that it's detecting that this workflow is and this repository is an HCL repository. HCL is a HashiCorp language, which is essentially, it's, it's a superset of JSON. It's uh, something like, uh, well, it's not really the topic of this video, but you would, if you were writing Terraform modules, you would probably be writing it in HCL. The bulk of the code in this repository is HCL, so I think GitHub is detecting that. And it doesn't really have a specialized workflow for that, so I think it's just suggesting simple workflow. So we'll just click on this button and say, say set up this workflow. And uh, we see this GitHub gives us this screen where we can configure the workflow. I think we'll just uh, edit this file, we'll remove this comments and change the name. So we want this workflow to be basically a linter. So we'll just call it linter, even this sort of blank, we'll say linter.yaml. This is fine. Whenever you push to master or create a pull request on master, I think that's uh, that's good enough. I'm considering changing the branch over here to main, but for now it's master, I'll just let this be for the purpose of this video. So, these comments are not that valuable. I think they have it in the blank template. So we'll just uh, remove this. If you're setting up your very first workflow, it's there to help you out over here. We're just going to remove this. So like this comment says that this if, if any workflow run is made up of several steps. And uh, this is true for many, if you're used to any other CI, CI system, there are similar concepts over there. Now GitHub has this, top level concept of a workflow. So I'm adding an inter workflow. I'm, I can definitely add another workflow for a CI for deployment. Not a lot of scope for that over here. Maybe for testing, testing the Ansible playbook, I could write something else later. So that's the top level construct in GitHub workflows. And each workflow is built up of sequence of actions. Right. So this is really defining that and we'll not go too deep into any all of this. We'll just set up our simple uh, this uh, super linter workflow and test it out. So like it says, you know, these, these comments are not really that valuable right now. This workflow contains a single job called build. Okay, that's fine. And it runs on Ubuntu latest. That's also good, good enough for us. 
and steps re represent a sequence of tasks that will be executed as part of the job. That's fine. And this step, the first step is required. It basically checks out your repository over there, so that's required. So it's a good turn. It's a good opportunity to go and look at the documentation for Superlinter as well. We'll come back over here. We'll, we'll look at this again. And you can see that, okay, Superlinter supports all of these languages right now. Terraform and Ansible, both of them are listed, so which is great. Okay, let's let's get back here. Okay, we don't really need any of these scripts. You know, we do need the checkout, but we don't need any of these other scripts. So I'm just going to remove it and look at. Uh, there is a convenient uh, sidebar over here. You know, you can just uh, you can just take this, copy copy the snippet from here, put it over here. So we need to indent it correctly, and okay. So we have not we have just added the linter to a workflow. We have not configured it. Let's see what happens with this. We'll click start commit and uh, give a meaningful commit message over here. So configure super linter. And uh, let's create a new branch for this commit. I'll call it super linter. OK. So let's see what happens with this. So right now, like I said, there there are no actions, there are no uh, no workflows right now in this repository. It's basically just just the YAML files and just the HCL files. So when we create this pull request, let's see what happens. By the way, I could have committed it straight away, but I just want to show you that you know we have added this workflow over here. So now with each PR, there are checks. So let's see. It takes a second for this to start. OK, so the linter pull request has started. So we have, if you remember, we have configured the linter to run on pull requests on pushes to master branch and on lint, uh, and on pull requests. So let's see. OK, so we have. This is the actions interface. You might have already seen it. Uh, most of this should be familiar. It basically sets up the job and this also uh, gets all the repositories. It's now. Building GitHub slash superlinter. OK, that's weird. I'm not I don't recall seeing this. But what we are mainly interested in is. Uh, the last two steps that we see over here run actions slash checkout at v2 and superlinter uh, and most particularly superlinter is the task that we are most interested in action slash checkout is basically checking out the repository getting the code in that directory where the superlinter is going to do its work so this will probably it's taking some time so we're just going to look at the documentation in the meanwhile just make sure how we can go about configuring it further. So there are uh, the blog post has some more information over here on what's uh, what, what can be done. So it says that okay there are default rules, and uh, some of the, for some of the languages you can configure the rules, but by default you don't really need to put anything. There is. Uh, on the marketplace itself, and I'll put this link in the description below. So on the marketplace, let's use the latest version. OK, how do I switch to latest version? Because 2.0 is clearly not the latest version. 2.1.0 is the latest version as of right now. Yeah, OK, so let's see the documentation for that. Uh, all of these languages are supported. That's great. And uh, this is the example, you know, we have created this file and we use the simple workflow, you know, GitHub's own wizard to create this file. We didn't need to copy any of these things, but this would also have been completely fine. You could have just created this file manually in your code base and uh, pushed it and the action would have been configured. You don't need to go, uh, go, go do this via the UI. OK, so uh, the steps are very similar. OK, so here we have this. We have the these are this is how we configure it by setting environment variables and I think uh, I, I think I'm seeing the pattern here. So if, if I don't, for example, if I don't want to validate Ansible, I set this to false. 
uh, which means that okay you know yeah all right here is uh, here we see all the options that are there and uh, i don't really see a need for disabling any of these things so oh this is useful so then symbol basically uses yaml files right so it could get mixed up you know we don't want yaml lint running on ansible directory and ansible lint running on regular yaml files so we have an environment variable called ansible directory which runs on slash ansible let's see if that's what we have i'm pretty sure it is ansible but let's let me double check anyway oh yeah it is ansible so uh, i think we are good there we don't need to change this but we could disable errors false okay so if I wanted to live with errors, you know, if I, I could do this incrementally that, uh, okay, even if there are errors, it should at least let the PR, it should still not fail the PR. So if I am right in thinking that there, this would have errors, the PR would, PR would be marked as failed. And I might not want that right now because it's a very new, workflow i want i might want to do this incrementally that's completely okay by the way you know like you doing it incrementally that's completely fine so in in that case i might just want to get the status with every pr like have this run with every pr but not fail the pr and i could set that flag but for now i can just ignore it as well is there anything else that i need to so I don't really have any of these other files in the directory, so I don't really need to set uh, any of these to false. I could just let it be true and it would probably pick it from the file extension and not validate things. So let's see if it actually fails on anything, anything which is valid. Otherwise, I could start by disabling those particular particular validators. It seems that this is taking some time. All right, oh, it's done. And as expected, Superlinter has thrown some errors. So let's just take a look at what kind of errors has, it has thrown. Okay. All right, so it has tried to parse all, uh, oh, sorry, lint all Ansible files using YAML lint. And it's a success for most of it. Okay. Oh, there is a shell check lint, uh, and these uh, there is a, a small shell script which just generates keys, nothing else. So okay. So it tells me that okay, I should use double quotes to prevent clobbing. I thought I fixed this actually, so I'm not really sure why this happened. But okay, it's a very simple fix. I can do that. And now let's see the Terraform. Okay, all Terraform files are. The linting for all Terra file, uh, sorry, all Terraform files are successful, even Ansible, and that's uh, that's a bit of a surprise for me. I didn't really expect everything to pass, but that's good news. I did I create another pull request which would fix that uh, shell script, or I can directly comment it. It's uh, my repository after all, so I'm just going to say generate keys, and I would probably talk more about all of these things in a, another video. Right now, I'm just going to talk about fixing these linter errors. Okay, so uh, fix linting errors in uh, what is the file name? Generate keys dot sh. That's good enough. I'm just going to commit directly to the master branch. I don't really need to create a pull request and everything. All right, so I have committed this, and now I can go and run the check on the pull request again. So the last one is failed, but I can run this again. I think I should. Let's see if I have an option to run the check again over here. Uh, okay, rerun jobs. Rerun all jobs. Okay. Again, it's building. That's weird. Maybe there's a configuration setting I can use so that it doesn't build every time. Let's see the syntax over here. I think it says that, okay, it uses probably this line if I add. So I think I'll copy this syntax over here. I'm pretty sure I can just 
switch to latest rather than a specific version. I, I would rather stay on the latest version rather than, you know, lock to V2.1.0. I'll still give a meaningful commit message. Use Docker image for superlinter. All right, commit changes. And that's it. Let's see what happens to our checks now. Okay, so it pulls. All right, no more build stuff. So to see the final workflow configuration file, you can just look at this repository for which I'll be pasting the link in the description. This was definitely a surprise for me. I didn't expect uh, all the errors to be fixed so easily. I think it's uh, it's a very easy when I'm ready for merging this. All right, and that's it done so we have our github workflow set up and any new pushes to this repository i would have a link to running on i have not disabled any other linter so when i do add documentation to this in form of a readme.md i'll have an md validator linter running on that so let's see what errors it reports then but that's an exercise for later all right i hope you enjoyed this video and do let me know if you would like to see videos similar to this or some other topics uh, do let me know in comments below and if you like this please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel have a good day bye everyone